So we have a little show and tell before we begin. This piece is very complicated and it actually goes by very fast. It's in four scenes or four tableau, as Stravinsky called it. It was designed to be danced and it goes by in about 23 minutes and there are no breaks between the tableau. So they just go one right to the others. And also there are some customs that go with, with peasant weddings that Stravinsky uses or the part of the text which you may not understand otherwise. So at the beginning, the first tableau, the first scene would seem to be all about the bride's hair. And you may wonder, why does she keep talking about her hair? What's going on with all the stuff about the hair? Well, the tradition in peasant Russia was that the maiden bride, the unmarried girls, wore their hair in a single braid. And when it was time to be married, all of a sudden the braid was cut and plaited in two. And that was a symbol of lots of things. It was a symbol that she was to be married. But another side of this that is important in understanding why the bride wails and cries so much about this braid being cut in two is that also these were all arranged marriages. And normally it was an arranged marriage with somebody from a different town which may be quite a ways away. And during this time, it may mean that for the bride, she very rarely or maybe even never sees her family again. She goes and is part of a new family. And so all of this about the hair is because of that. And for example, the bride is saying at the beginning, my braid, my light brown braid, last night my mother plated you my braid. She curled you in a silver ring. The ruthless Svashenka came and ruthless and merciless, she began to pinch and tear the braid in two. And a Svashenka means literally the braid destroyer. And she takes that braid and pulls it apart. And so at the beginning, what you're gonna hear is the soprano, representing the bride in this case, although not always, sing this. And so now Molly is going to sing the opening just by herself for a moment as we do that. And then, this is of course what Stravinsky does with the pianos and the percussion and the soprano. Ready? <laughs> And this goes on a little bit, and it keeps coming back because she keeps remembering her wonderful hair and what's happening. These lovely ladies over here are the unmarried friends of the bride. They're the bridesmaids, so to speak, if we're thinking of that. And they are here in part to comfort the bride. And so following this opening section, they come in and they sing with uh, kind of a little chant-like line where they're telling her to be calm, that we'll comb your hair, we'll do everything nicely for you. And so at rehearsal two, let's call an audible and actually do it with just the pianos and the singers from the very beginning. So we'll do it only one time with pianos and singers. There's that F sharp. And... <laughs> So that happens as they are doing this little bit of comforting. But later on, they will still comfort yet in other ways. And now in a little faster and jollier section, they're going to they're gonna say, don't honk, swan, don't cry, don't grieve, and they'll try to cheer her up. So this is the ladies alone first on the next section. Ready. <laughs> And as they do this, again, you'll hear that there are kind of these folky tunes in here. Ya da da di da da di da di da. Very common to folk all over the world. And Stravinsky uses some of these tunes, but he also uses these as cells. You'll hear that later on. He uses them kind of as melodic cells, which he develops in various ways. But now, how it sounds with the pianos. And ready. <laughs> And 
we have another section where again, they are trying to, at this point, comfort her by telling her how wonderful her husband-to-be is. And this is at rehearsal 12. Again, first just the sopranos and the altos as we do that. Ready. <laughs> And as they sing this, as they sing this again, Stravinsky does these wonderful things with the piano that take what sounds like a perfectly wonderful little folky kind of line, and now we have everybody pianos and percussion. And ready, and. Etc. But also in this first tableau, all of which takes place at the bride's house, we also get the mother of the bride, and the mother of the bride, of course, is a little upset too, but here she is saying, Holy Mother, Virgin Mary, come to our house and help the Svach plate the new braid, the two new braids. And here we are with the soprano and tenor. Interestingly, the tenor sings the words of the bride here, but that's okay, the soprano singing too. Good. With pianos, yes, and percussion. Ah. And what you're going to hear after this is repetitions of the opening thing, and the open little chant line is going to lead directly into the second tableau, the second scene, which is at the groom's house, and then we're going to have this, Tutti at 27. <laughs> And as they're, as they're singing this, they are now again imploring, Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, please come and be with us as we are doing this. Everything that happens in these, in these weddings and also everything that Stravinsky pays attention to in his libretto recognizes the importance, importance of the Orthodox Church, and so you're going to hear these continual pleadings at this time. So next we have the spot where it's now the groom's parents who are, who are moaning a little bit and talking about Chvetis. And interestingly, they talk about his curls and how his curls are going to be combed and oiled with these precious oils that we've gone to a special place to buy for that. And truthfully, that isn't a big deal. The groom's hair isn't a big deal. And I think Stravinsky only used it for kind of balance in these first two scenes. But really what you have here is the, the mother and the father of the groom just talking about the curls. And who will these curls belong to now that he's married? With everyone. <laughs> And then we come to a place where all of a sudden in the middle, the groom is talking about all of these, all of the Holy Mary, Mother of God, come and help us again. Come and make our marriage wonderful, bless our marriage. And in this case, the bass soloist who represents the groom at this time is singing those words, but with the basses of the choir singing with him. And then the women will interrupt at this point. <laughs> And as this goes on, you can imagine that you would be in a Russian church hearing the basses sing that wonderful line. So for this next part, we're going to talk a little bit about some of Stravinsky's techniques and how he combines rhythms in fabulous ways. So first we have the timpani and two of the pianists playing with what seems like a very simple line. This is at 62. You'll be 
boom, beep, boom. Okay? Yeah. And they do this simple little ostinato, the simple figure that goes on. All the pianos and percussion at this point, please, at 62. And red. And as they play this, this keeps going, but on top of that, he places other rhythms. So first we have the men and the women of the chorus, and we'll take them alone right now. Ready. <laughs> And what they're asking at this time is, St. Luke, please come and bless, bless this wedding. St. Luke, please come and give us all of, your, all of your gifts as we do that. But this is a long section that now builds up to the third tableau where they're going to head off to the wedding. And so this is already starting. They're saying, Potna Svatbu, which is come to the wedding, come to the wedding, come to the wedding. Three before 62, Tutti. The pitches for at three before sixty two. Yeah. Got it? Everybody? And ready. <laughs> And that's the beginning of suddenly the third tableau as we get again, ya da 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 dee ba da dee da, that familiar theme from before. And next, another little example of the kinds of things Stravinsky does in combining rhythms in various ways. We're first going to take just the tenors and the altos at 70. So tenor starts, solo tenor, solo tenor, right? Solo tenor, and then all the altos of the choir. And two and three. And so they're going on like that, but there are other things happening. The gentle, the basses of the choir. Mm, ready. They're singing this against that. <laughs> And all together, from 70, tutti, please, and two. And as we get near the end of this tableau, when we're about to be going to the actual wedding, the mothers of both bride and groom have a little lament themselves. And it is tradition in Russian peasant weddings that the mothers are not allowed to attend. So they are busy by themselves while everyone else goes off to the wedding. With everyone at 82. Ready? <laughs> And so that goes on for a period of time until all of a sudden it is interrupted by the fourth tableau, which is all about the party. And this is how it begins.
and that's what will, you will recognize suddenly that the fourth tableau is here and the party is about to begin. The party itself is, is the longest actually part of this and it's a little bit like you were actually there because it's like you were walking around and you hear a snatch of conversation here, something here. You're going to have, at various points, people are going to say things like, oh, do we have enough gifts? They really need wonderful gifts for their wedding. And at another point, they're talking about how many kegs of beer, how many lovely barrels of beer and everything else they had with this. And uh, all of this goes on. And along the way, there is a drunk wedding guest, which, what can I say, it can happen. Uh, so we have a drunk wedding guest. And Stravinsky actually takes what he does musically from a real experience he had on a train sitting in a compartment with two drunk Swiss guys. And one of them was hiccuping. And so he got the idea for this from that. So 127, ready. <laughs> And this all goes on for a while. There's a lot of things in the wedding party, but it ends very beautifully as the groom. But what actually happens is that they send a previously selected married couple off to warm up the marriage bed. And then they send the bride and groom off to the bed. And then this is a lovely thing that the groom uh, sings to his wife, talking about how wonderful their lives will be, and then the piece ends just with the tolling of bells. But this is a little bit of that. <laughs> So our hope in presenting this to you is that as things go by, your ears will recognize some of these little things as they happen, as this piece goes by quickly. And we do have some super titles. We do not have every bit of the text. If it was there, you would just be trying to follow it so much it wouldn't make much sense. But we're telling you enough of the story. So please enjoy Stravinsky's Svadebka.
Ich 